Okay. So either everybody is currently feeling like they're information in information overload from everything this morning, but I'm really curious to hear um, perspectives or thoughts or uh, comments, if you like, on what they've heard this morning thus far. Uh, and I guess also what you're hoping to still get out of the rest of today as well. Is anyone willing to go first in terms of that? Def? Yep. Um, no, I'll take it. Maybe in the back? No, no it's, it might, it's, might be it's probably better. It's just a big room. I appreciate it. Um, thanks everyone for um, presentations. It's been really, been really interesting. Um, I guess from my perspective, a few things I'd like to point out is um, it's not just about the things that we have to do to get a city to become smarter, but it's also about um, understanding and documenting what we already have. So um, I think one of the challenges is, and uh, I think I've, I've seen some of that in one of the presentations, is to develop some measurement standards, not just to identify the, um, the indicators for, for a city, but also how we measure them and how we rank them in terms of um, importance and how they affect each other depending on um, the actions that we do against them. Because um, we did a, a pilot project for um, Barcelona a few years ago, and um, we saw that depending on the um, the order of the implementation of the actions that we had, um, the effect and the outcome was completely different. So um, it seems to me that we have to also have some standards against these variables that um, uh, are created against those actions. So what can we do is obviously different than what we should be doing and also what um, is the order of the actions that we need to do to get to where we want. Is that something you could share, the experience of uh, Barcelona implementation? I mean, share not necessarily in detail now, but at a later time, you can give us Yeah, a definitely. It's, um, the concept that was um, released at the time, um, it came under a, a name that you may find on, online, I call Gnosis. So K-N-O-W-C-I-S. Um, yeah, which is kind of short for knowledge cities. Yeah. But it also rhymes with the Greek word um, gnosis, knowledge. which means knowledge. Yeah, yeah, right. um, and um, although most of the findings were more expected than you would assume for a research initiative, but um, one of the things that struck me um, was that um, how, how different the outcome was depending on the order of actions that you needed to do. Yeah. And it's not just actions that um, you know are sort of self-explained. You obviously need Wi-Fi infrastructure if you are to provide, I don't know, tourism information or live um, event updates um, to people. But um, things that you wouldn't think uh, have an effect <coughs> on each other so that were most evident at that um, outcome. Good <coughs> knowledge. Any other thoughts, questions, Stephen? I guess that might actually be also useful um, if people maybe introduce themselves and just say where they're from too, so people have some context. Christ, where am I from? <laughs> well, I was going to say, probably not the best And where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephen Ramage, uh, currently representing <coughs> Ordnance Survey, um, but speaking for myself. Um, everything I've seen is very developed world focus. Um, there's more people offline than online. Um, how are we going to address that? How are we going to get all those people connected? The, the smart cities, everything we're talking about is very technologically driven. I think we need to look a bit differently to some of the more societal things that need to be addressed and tackled and how that helps smart cities. Because you know, we, we can help the developed places get better, but having just spent uh, couple of weeks in Tanzania working on a water point mapping system that has spent about a billion dollars in the last five to six years, one billion dollars for one country, um, it is tragic. Um, and you can see, I mean, I, I've been there working on an API to enable a sort of standards interface. But there's some real fundamental issues that will help people get smart. And that goes back to Carson's point about the, the air we breathe the food we eat and the water that we drink. I was going to 
and say I might follow up a little bit on that. Um, one of the reasons I was in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago was that I was invited there by the World Bank to actually participate in their City Sense conference. And I, strangely enough, ended up on a panel actually about UAVs, but that was kind of indicative of the day in terms of the, um, the way things were put together. But I, I said to the organisers that I was going to have five minutes, um, and I said, what exactly do you need me to say, if you like, if I'm going to stand up here and I've only got five minutes? And what he said to me was, he said, a lot of the people here we've actually funded to come in from developing nations and places that have actually got cities that are under development. They're all overwhelmed. Um, they're completely overwhelmed by the quantity of the problems that they've got to deal with, by the options and solutions and all of the, the whiz-bang and amazing that's out there for them to try and participate in. He said, can you give me some really simple principles that are going to actually help these guys when they're trying to tackle all of these problems? Uh, and so we kind of came up with a, a five bullet points, if you like, that were sort of principles if, for a resilient city. But a lot of it was really focused around, um, I guess, providing guidance uh, to these people, particularly when they don't have the technology knowledge. They're not necessarily online. So how do you give them information principles about what it is that they need to look for uh, and how they do that sort of work? And so I guess it was a nice challenge for us as an organisation is how do we actually talk to places that are a developing nation rather than a developed one, which predominantly is the groups that we're talking to most of the time. So it's quite useful in that respect. Okay, just because I'm short, don't give me the little demo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this kind of goes along with what uh, Steve was talking about. I've written down here, uh, you know, the idea of scalability. A lot of everything I'm seeing here seems to be large cities, uh, you know, and I grew up in a place that had a post office, a gas station, a blinking light. And so it didn't, you know, when, when you talk to large cities in there, probably not what we're talking about here is large cities. You know, if you went, if you went into town, uh, you know, you went to a place that still was a rather small thing. But, you know, I think a lot of the issues are still relevant even in those smaller towns, you know. Uh, emergency response, you know, healthcare, um, you know, I mean, things of this sort. I, I'm, I'm just curious if anybody has has looked at the scalability of some of these actions that we're talking about. If if they, you know, both scale up as well as scale down. So. I'm David Graham. I live in Orlando, Florida, which uh, may or may not be smart depending on <laughs> whether or not you've ever been separated by your money from your money there. But this meeting started out for me in a strange way. When we first introduced the topic of smart cities, I was thinking about the opposite. And even though I live in a country you would probably call the developed world, there are a couple of cities in Missouri that have gotten a lot of headlines in the last few days. And I was thinking about the decay rather than the growth of cities and thinking about how you would measure, as we were talking about measurements and indicators, how would you measure something like the, the metropolis of St. Louis and the disaffection of many of its citizens from that? I didn't, I didn't get an answer from this morning, but it certainly got me focused away from the technology and more towards uh, the citizens and their their some index of their satisfaction with the city. I, I don't have an answer for that, and I couldn't draw it, but it's been on my mind all morning, so I thought I'd share it with you. So, uh, one of the other hats I wear is for the University of Strathclyde, the, the Institute for Future Cities, and they supported a bid through, so the British government has something called the, what used to be called the Technology Strategy Board, which is now called Innovate UK, and they gave about 32, 36 million US dollars in a grant to Glasgow in Scotland, and they created what's called Open Glasgow, and they were given 18 months to develop a future cities technology demonstrator. And what you've just described was actually part of the work they did. So they, they, they put kiosks up in the city, central Glasgow, now, if you know Glasgow at all, that's actually not a particularly safe thing to do because people would probably go in and try and steal whatever they can. Um, but it, it worked really well. They, 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 put, uh, they put broadband into the whole city, which is free for people to access, public access. And they asked them to comment on things around satisfaction. So they used um, some simple spatial analysis to try and help people find the closest 
hospital to them. And they found that a number of people were actually travelling five, six miles to go to a hospital when actually about a mile away there was one closer. So the impact on transportation, infrastructure, health, uh, the, the citizens' time and welfare were all impacted. And that, that was a sort of measure of satisfaction they used in that, in that project. And that's all quite publicly available under Open Glasgow. Okay, any other questions, thoughts? <coughs> Who's got a picture or a sheet that they're going to actually share and put on the board? You've got one. Anybody else? Just got one. Awesome. What we're going to do is, I'd like as many of them as possible, and we're going to put them up here so you have an opportunity after lunch to come back and um, have a look over them. Please continue your conversations over lunch. Um, please continue to think about the questions you're going to ask this afternoon uh, in terms of the next lot of speakers. And please do, I know, I know it's a long day, but if you can be back um, in the room for, the, for at least the last session, that really is an opportunity to start pulling apart a lot of the, the documentation and next steps of what OGC as an organisation is going to be focusing on and doing. Uh, in relation to smart cities. So your contribution and participation in that is quite valuable to what we do. Uh, and so with that, please go and enjoy your lunch. If you can be back here by 1.30, which I know is a little different to the other agenda. So uh, if you can do that, that would be great. Thank you.